Hi, my name is Jason and welcome to the channel. In this short tutorial series, we'll be using the Lua language to create a single player collectathon game within the core editor. However, if this is in fact your first time using the core editor, I highly recommend checking out the video created by developers themselves covering the basics of how to navigate the core editor. I'll drop a link in the description below and you can check that out. Once you've opened up core, let's go create, create new, start new project and call it collectathon. Once the editor has opened up, let's create our first script. Go to the top, create script, create new script, and we'll call it our first script and create script. Uh, it's gonna place it in the project contents folder under my scripts, and we're gonna drag that from here into the hierarchy. Once it's in the hierarchy, uh, we're able to run the script when we press play. If we press play, nothing will currently happen because we haven't done anything to the script. Let's edit the script. Go down to properties and select the pen tool. And what we're gonna do first is a simple line of code called print, and then in brackets and inside quotation marks, just write our first script. Save that by control C, and then we just can either minimize or we can also drag and drop that and lock it in the bar. So once we've done that, click the event log and then we're gonna press play. As you can see down the bottom uh, in the event log, it has printed our first script. Congratulations, that is your first script. Something else that's very useful that we can do with in our code is called double dash, which is called commenting. So if we were to save this and it, just to point out, these asterisks means it hasn't been saved just yet. So if we save it, it will disappear. So if you go to place play, escape that, go to event log, you'll notice it hasn't printed our first script because it's been commented out. The next thing I wanna show you is a thing called variables and data types. Variables are a name used to hold one or more values. These values are really determined by a data type. So I'm just going to write down in comments uh, what each of these types are. So we've got five currently that I'm going to show you. Another way to comment out code is using the dash dash square brackets, dash dash square brackets. So everything within these will be commented out. So let's just remove that. And I'm going to show you the types of data. We have ints, which equals a whole number. We have floats, which equal decimals and fractions. We also have strings, which we like used above. So example, our first script. We have booleans, which act as switches. So they'll check if, if in fact it is true or false. And then we have nil. So nil is used for nothing. So if a variable isn't ready to hold information yet, it will be called nil. So what all these are are data types. So a variable can call be called whatever you want. For example, let's call it a number and we'll equal one. So what this is actually saying is the variable is called a number, but it's holding the type integer, which is one. Something else that needs to be said is we want it to be local because it only affects this script only. We don't want it to be changed from anywhere else but this script. So I'm just gonna go ahead and save that. Now that we've got a data type or a variable and data type for integers, let's add them for the rest of them. So local a decimal equals 9.99. Local a string, we'll leave that blank for now. Local a switch, I'll just call it ball for now. Local true, we won't be using that, but just for example. And local a cat, which we don't have a cat, so let's make it nil. Now that we have variables assigned, we can use these variables for numerous reasons, but for, for example's sake, we'll stick with the print and we'll just go print brackets and then double quotation marks. Actually, for now, let's remove those quotation marks. And what we'll do instead so we're a number plus a decimal. So this will run some maths and plus the 10 with 
So if we save that, which I've just done, and we'll press play, we'll run the code, can't see it yet, but if we escape and click on the event log, you can see 1999. We can take print even further by actually adding strings, variables, and more strings together. So let's do that. So with this A string, I'm gonna write, hey, I've got money, exactly like that. And then we'll have a string. And then what we can do is dot dot. So this will separate the variables because we can't plus a string with numbers. And then we're gonna put the numbers in double brackets. And then after that, we're gonna go dot dot in my wallet. And we'll need a space after the in, or before the in, sorry. Save that, and then we'll click on the event log and press play. Hey, I've got $19.99 in my wallet. Perfect. Another cool thing you can do with strings is actually break up the um, lines. So you can go forward slash, forward slash, N, and then type, here's that, a lot, question mark. We'll save that, go to the event log, press play. And as you can see, is that a lot has been put on the next line. I hope that you found this video helpful. Uh, if you did, please like or even comment below with any questions or feedback that you have for me. If you want to continue this tutorial series as well, consider subscribing and part two should be dropping out quite soon uh, if it hasn't already. You can also catch me streaming core development on Twitch. Uh, I'll drop a link in the description below and that's usually every Monday, Wednesday and Saturday. Anyway, I hope this video was helpful once again and I'll see you in part two.